everyone, Sophia here from Magra Challenge. Welcome back to my happy place. Yes, this is my Friday sewing along video. I am here to document my journey teaching myself how to sew. I am not a professional seamstress, I think it's obvious, but I really want to learn and I'm sharing with you how I am teaching myself to sew. Why? Because I believe that everybody can do it. There's a lot of people out there who want to learn to sew but are very intimidated by things like this. Those patterns can be very intimidating. I'm still trying to figure things out and I am making mistakes, there is no doubt about it. And I have to tell you right away, there is absolutely zero, zero chance this particular shirt that I'm making, it's the Mackles M7838. I am making view D right here or option D, which is the one with the peasant type um, sleeve. There is no way this is going to fit me. Why? Because I have tunnel vision. <laughs> I only focused on one thing when I did the measurement. I only focused on the part right here where it tells you what the measurements are with the finished garment. So what did I do? I measured my bust because it's a shirt. I don't have to measure my waist. And I said, okay, 41 and a half. Finished garment is 41 and a half. It fits. Uh, and so according to this, I'm a size 14. Except that when I was showing you, either I didn't have the flap uh, <laughs> down or I just had real tunnel vision but thanks to Sandra who sent me a very detailed letter this is the second one actually she sent me and it's very helpful Sandra thank you very much I didn't see on the flap here that you were supposed to also measure um, your bust line prior to doing the nonsense here and according to this on top here so according to the finished garment I'm a size 14 which I thought was gonna fit because I'm a 12 now but according to the bust size, are you ready for this? I'm a size 20. <laughs> 14, 16, 18, 20. So basically this shirt is either going to be really snug on me, like, well, snug, like the tunique, or it's gonna be three size too small. So um, yeah, I'm making mistakes and I tell you what, I love it. What? Yes, I do, because this is how I learn. I can guarantee you now that I will never, never again make this mistake. The shirt is definitely not gonna fit me. Um, if it does, I would have to really, really lose like another 10, 15 pounds, which I plan on doing, uh, in order for me to wear it. But I was thinking, you know what? If it really doesn't fit me and it looks like it's a shirt for somebody who's really petite how about i do a giveaway once i'm done with it you may enjoy that so either it fits or it doesn't so i probably have half of you going like make it fit make it fit and half of you going don't fit don't fit i want to win it so we'll see what happens anyway what are we making today we're assembling the front and i've already done one side of the front because it's a shirt so it's separated into Two parts right I made the right one already so today I'm going to show you how to make the left one I pre-filmed uh, the other day um, how to do the dart so I'm gonna insert that in there in case you see a different top it's because I did the dart already uh, but I'm going to show you what the front looks like what I've done so far and today we're gonna do um, because I don't have to do the darts we're gonna do the band that goes right here where the buttons are going to be because I did the other side where the button holes are going to be and we're going to assemble the shoulders so we'll have basically like a um, sleeveless shirt and it would be a good indication as to whether or not it's gonna fit or not um, if it doesn't fit the two <laughs> they will be like this with a big gap in between like a um, kimono type if it fits, I'll be able to put the two flap on top of each other. So without further ado, let's get started. Sandra, you have no idea how priceless you are to me right now. And all of you who have given me hints and encouragements and sharing your ideas and sharing your techniques. Um, yes, I understand all of them. 
I am just so very grateful. It's, I'm telling you, I have an entire community of actual people who know how to sew telling me what to do. And this is priceless because I want to learn so bad, so bad. You have no idea how much I want to learn to sew. Uh, and I, it makes me so happy. And I love making mistakes. I'm not kidding. I am not, you know, serving you a big lie. I really do need to make mistakes. That's the only way I'm going to learn. So don't be afraid of mistakes. You're going to make them. So whether you make your garment way too big or way too small, or you buy the wrong fabric, or you you all crooked it, that, or you cut the pattern the wrong way don't fear mistakes you're going to make them embrace them every single mistake is a mistake you won't make again and it's um a learning experience so i'm very grateful to be able to share my journey with you um, because i'm trying to inspire you to take that leap take that leap learn to sew if you're interested otherwise you know don't bother okay let me get up and show you on um, the mini me <laughs> model uh, what we're doing today. Okay, so this is uh, mini me, and uh, in the last video, if you remember, we made the yoke here and the back with um, the pleat. Okay, but during the week, what I did is that I did the front here. And basically the front is just what you cut, except that over here there's a band. You see I have the wrong side of the fabric and the right side of the fabric right here, right? This particular piece right here is added to it. And that's what we're gonna do today. Now, the thing about this piece of fabric is that this band right here is that it does have interfacing. So here's the band for the left side and you can see that I've added interfacing to it. Interfacing is very easy to place. You basically just press it on so that the glue um, adheres to the fabric. I've shown you how to do that in another video, so I'm not gonna go through that. Um, I mean, again, very easy. You take your uh, steam iron and you just press it. You may want to spritz it with water if you need to. And that just basically glues a piece of fabric to the back and it gives it strength and it gives it a little bit more stiffness. So when you have a band like this, or even the collar, you'll see that you do that on the collar too. Um, this is gonna hold in place very nicely. First of all, it's gonna fold nice and flat on your torso and on your chest. But when you place your buttons and when you have your buttonholes, when you're going to actually put in your buttons, your buttons are not going to be on a flimsy piece of fabric with a hole and they're going to come out. It's going to give it enough hold so that the buttons really stay in place. So I hope I'm explaining that properly. So let me take that down because this is the side that we're going to work on today. So here we go. Uh, step number six was the dots. And as I mentioned, I already pre-filmed that. So I'm going to insert that right now so you can see how to do the dots. So here are my two fronts, uh, the one that goes on the left and the one that goes on the right. We're going to start with the left one. I've pressed everything already. And the darts should be below the armhole. You remember we did um, the little dots. I got one dot here, one dot here, and one dot here. And what do you need to do? Very easy. Let's get the pins. So you're going to grab this dot. I have two, remember we did three. You grab this dot and you put your pin right through the other dot, okay? Like this. And then you go to this dot right here and what you're basically doing Here we go. It's flattening this like this. You're making an arrow basically. Alright, so hold on. There's my dart. There we go. So your dart is going to go flat this way. So what do you do now? Well, you just pin it.
like this. So you see what I've done here, I've made the fold, right? So I'm just gonna fold it this way, right? You wanna make sure still that you are dot to dot. Okay, I'm fine. And if you want, you can trace it. So you go from one dot to the other. I don't really need these right now. Like this, okay? Let me put those back on because I wanna hold it together. And you're just going to do a straight line. From this edge all the way to this dot. That's it, just like this. It's gonna follow this, all right? So you'll have this little flap here. And the one thing you wanna make sure you're doing um, when you do your dart, you know how I start by doing a few stitches backward and then I do a few stitches forward? You don't do that at the end of the dart that goes inside. Um, there we go. Let me make sure I'm in the middle here. You don't do that at the end of the dart. At the end of the arrow the narrowest point because it will give you some bulk and I keep stitching through even though I'm outside all right no stitches backward so the first dart is done and basically this is what it looks like Okay, you just have this stitching line that goes this way. Let me put this back on so you can see how we created a triangle. All right. I'm going to unfold it. And this is what you should have. And when you're pressing it, you're going to press this down like this. Okay, so let me press this and then I'll do the next dart. So this is what the dart looks like right and I pressed it down and in the front it looks like this which you can barely see because of the pattern now I was told that the end of the dart basically the arrow part of it should fall right on the center of your breast and it does for me right here all right well if I'm placing it properly so it's either here or it's right underneath it depending on the shape of um, the garment that you're making but again remember when you get to this part right here you don't go backward make back stitches you keep going so that you don't have a little bit of thickness right here from extra threads and then you're going to press it down you see where the flap is Oops right here you press that down so that way everything falls nicely so next is number seven right here turn in at one quarter of an inch seam allowance on long unnotched edge of the front band and press four is the number on the pattern it's uh, was pattern piece number four so what does it mean well here's my band uh, that's going to go along the edges of the left side of the shirt and this is the side that has the notch and this is the unnotch side so what you're supposed to do is calculate a quarter of an inch seam allowance so I'm using this little gizmo here and I'm moving it to a quarter of an inch and you're going to go to your ironing board and what you do is grab this piece right here you're gonna move it down at exactly a quarter of an inch like this and you're going to press it and you're going to do that all along so you press this then you go to a quarter of an inch here you press that quarter of an inch here you press that okay so let me do this and then when I come back we'll get to the next step and 
here it is. All right, so again, you're doing that little flap here at a quarter of an inch from the edges and you're doing that on the row edge, not on the edge that has the little notch. So what's the next step? And now we're moving to number eight. And number eight is with the right sides together, pin the front band, which we just did, to the front, having the row edges even. Stitch, trim, press seam towards the front band. So you see here the dark color, again, that indicates the um, right side of the fabric. And then this little pattern here with the little dot, that's actually the interfacing. So let's just reproduce this. So I'm gonna take the front of my shirt right here. Again, this is the arm hole, and they want you to place the band on this side, right? So you're going to have the right side facing up, and then you're going right side to right side. Now there's a little notch right here, and there's a little notch right here. I don't know if you can see it. That's the one notch that I did outward, which is the appropriate way of doing it. But on all the other pieces, I actually cut into it. Now, what happens if I do this? Because they want row edge to row edge. This is no longer a row edge right here because we did the uh, little fold, okay? Well, I'm off. This doesn't fit. If you look at it this way, you can see where my notch is here and then the one behind it is there. Why are they not matching? They should be like this, not like this. So I was thinking, well, maybe it's not matching because we did the dart here and the dart kind of like, you know, got the fabric together, but the dart is here, it's not here. So either I miscut or, um, I don't know. <laughs> I think what happened is that I notched uh, from a different size on the pattern. It's possible, I don't know, um, which, I don't know. So anyway, the notches don't match, but you're gonna match corner to corner here, right? And corner to corner there. Now, I have a little bit of the front that's poking out. I'm not too worried about that because this eventually is gonna get turned on itself to make the hem. So whatever is extra, I'll just put it into the hem. So you wanna match edges to edges, right? Let's make sure we got the top here proper. And you wanna pin it. So next, what we're going to do is stitch and then trim. Press the seam toward the front of the band. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna to go to the machine and right along the edges here on the row edge, I'm going to do a regular 5 8 of an inch seam allowance stitch from one end to the other. That's it. Once that's done, I'm going to trim the excess so I'll have a smaller seam allowance. Once that's done I'll have to flip this over and press it but first let's do the whole stitching from one end to the other. Just basically sewn the band directly onto the edges of the front, right? So eventually we're gonna have to flip it this way and then we'll have to flip it this way as well, all right? But we're not there yet. The next step is to trim the excess here because this part right here, that's the seam allowance, is going to be encased into this band and you really don't want a lot of bulk. So let's just go ahead, take the scissors and trim, leaving about a quarter of an inch. So now I have just this little flap here that's a quarter of an inch. The next step is going to be to fold this over like this and we're going to press it. Now, here's something. I'm going to turn it this way so you can see. 
how do I want to press this part? Do I want to press it going this way towards my waist? Or do I want to press it like this to match this little flap here? Well, I want to press it to match. Why? Because if I go this way, when I'm folding this over, what am I doing with it? Uh, it's going to be in the way. But if I press it inside, going towards the band, when I flip this over and place it over it, that little flap, that little seam right here is going to be enclosed. So you won't see it. You may feel it, but you won't see it. All right, so first step is going to the ironing board. We've just done this. We've cut the excess and I'm just going to press this this way. Make it nice and flat and making sure that this particular flap here is pressed on the inside. So what you may want to do is start by pressing that first. So we'll press this one first on the inside and then go back to it and press here. If you look at the pattern is uh, number nine and in this step we have to turn the front band to inside along the fold line press and slip stitch yes that means that we are actually going to do some hand sewing at this point press the edge over the seam base the row edge together so what are we doing really I just did this right where we press this little flap on the inside what you're going to do is grab this edge right here, which we had folded, if you remember, at a quarter of an inch seam. And we're going to place it right on top of the stitch line from when we attach both pieces together. With a close-up, you probably see better. This is my little flap, which I have pressed towards the band. And I'm going to take the band. Remember, this is a little quarter of an inch seam that we pressed earlier and I'm going to place this right on the stitch line right here and I am pressing this so what this does is two things one it folds the band over and two it creates a crease right here and that crease is basically going to be the outside of your shirt the um, the flap for the front so you just continue to follow and place that band folded over onto the stitch line For those of you who quilt, slip stitching is pretty easy and you're very familiar with it because that's basically how you attach your binding, okay? But some of you don't, so I'm going to show you. I'm taking a coordinating thread. This one is a lavender. You could take the same one that you're using on your machine, but i got to be honest, I don't want to take it out of the machine. Um, it doesn't make much of a difference because if you are very good at slip stitching you won't see your stitches anyway so it doesn't matter okay so you thread your needle you're going to take this flap that you just placed over the seam um, from the previous stitching that we did right let me remove this extra thread okay and what you want to do is by hand you're going to sew this flap directly onto the shirt now if you were doing your stitching and you were grabbing this piece of fabric here which is the front of your shirt you would end up seeing all your little stitches right here um, on this side regardless of whether or not you have the right color it doesn't matter you just don't want to see the stitches so you're going to do slip stitching which is basically a kind of hidden stitching so I'm going to stitch by grabbing the flap right here and grabbing the underside 
here. So remember this is the little part that we ironed pressed uh, at a quarter of an inch, right? And then this is the one that we just pressed on the inside. So you start by putting your needle in here and don't worry about your little knot because it's going to be hidden. And you place your flap over. And the goal here is to grab part of that flap. It's not going to show on the other side because I'm doing the flap. And then you're going to grab the underside of the other flap. And you just make a tiny stitch. And then you pull a little bit. So what's going to happen here is that you're grabbing a part of the shirt that won't show a stitch and you're grabbing the other part of the shirt that won't show a stitch. So you're basically hiding your stitch in between those two layers. So no stitch is going to show on this side. And you keep going like this. And you can make, you gotta make small stitches though. You don't wanna make too big stitches. All right? And you keep going like this through the whole length. This is done. I have slip stitch the whole uh, length here and all we're gonna do now is just go ahead go back to the machine and right here along the edges we're going to do an edge stitch so add about maybe one millimeter from the edges just do a straight stitch and what it's gonna do is that you see how the fold here could basically unfold right if I press on it it's gonna hold it together and it gives it like a nice finish edge and an edge stitch is really not difficult to do at all uh, you basically need to figure out where you're going to guide your fabric do you want to do it on the outside of your foot or on the inside and what I do is that I use the inside because it acts as a little wall to guide the fabric. So I'm gonna keep my fabric right there. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, the edges is right there on the edge of the foot, but on the inside, not on the outside. And then I'm gonna move my needle as close to the edge as possible and plant it right there. Just going to do one stitch back and then I keep going and what it gives me is that straight line that is really really close to the edges and you're gonna see it in about a second when I get my fabric to the other side of the foot I don't know if you can see it but it's really just like barely a millimeter away from the edges and it closes the fold basically plus it looks good and I'm going to give you a close-up as to what it looks like do you see the little stitches right here okay all along the edges and because I've used the inside part of the foot it locked it in place and I'm pretty much at the same distance for the entire band and on the other side this is what it looks like all right so we are done with this piece now we're gonna assemble the shoulders so we just finished this piece right here right we did the band now we're gonna do the shoulder right here so stitch the front sections and back together at the shoulders. That's kind of easy. But what are we looking at? This is kind of crazy, all right? These are the two bands we just did. This is the right part of the front and this is the left part of the front. You see with the two darts here. This is the back. Remember the light color is the wrong side of the fabric. 
and remember how we did a yoke on the inside in the last video that is the right side of the fabric so you basically have the whole back like this in the white color with the yoke right here and what they want you to do is move the yoke out of the way and you're going to just attach the front part to the regular shoulders forget about the yoke we're not touching that yet so again I'm going to try to recreate what we just saw this is the back the way we did it the last time right with the yoke I'm looking on the inside so the front of the shirt so the front of the shirt is right here okay so what you want to do then we're gonna take the yoke that we placed and we're gonna move it out of the way we're not dealing with that right now we're only dealing with the shoulders so now that this is out of the way right I moved it down I'm going to place my shoulders so I'm looking at the inside of the shirt here so that means that this front is gonna go here matching the armhole right here and this front is gonna go right here matching the armhole here so that means that this shoulder needs to be attached to this shoulder you see how my notches fit and this shoulder needs to be attached this shoulder right with my two notches that match so you're just gonna go like this five eighths of an inch straight stitch here and like this five eighths of an inch straight stitch here and now I have two shoulders attached Here's the back of my neck. This is the front collar. And when I fold it forward, this is what I get. Right? This is the front of my shirt. So the bands are supposed to go over each other, right? When you close your shirt, because one band is going to have buttons, the other one is buttonhole. So you're going to pass your buttons through this. So your shirt basically is going to look like this in the front and I'm just doing a quick check to make sure I got the right length here. All right, everything looks pretty good. So the next step, if I look at the instructions, is this one here and they want you to slip stitch the press edges of the yoke facing over the seam based the neck and armhole edges you're gonna bring the yoke over the seam just like we did for the band same thing here and that's gonna get slip stitch and then we're gonna base the collar together and the armhole together so let's move the yoke back up here it is and you remember we pressed the other day we did this little thing and this is supposed to go right here and slip stitch right here and then this goes right here and you slip stitch this part here and here hand stitching here hand stitching there so what I want to do first is probably do I want to cut a little bit of this it doesn't say I'm gonna keep it because it doesn't say my instinct tells me to cut it because it's bulky on the shoulder but I don't want to do any step that is not in the uh, instructions because I'm a newbie but I, I am going to press it flat this way so it's easier for me to bring this right here and do a slip stitch so basically these two here are done and they want you to baste the neck part here and the two armholes here 
because you have the yolk and the back and didn't want them to shift I suppose so I'm just gonna do a quick baste on this nothing major again basting is just large stitches to hold it together because once we uh, start putting the sleeve those two pieces are going to be attached to the sleeve and you don't want one to shift underneath the other so you want to keep them together and like this now we know that this is supposed to be my size okay and you can tell right away if I use this here that this is absolutely not going to close on me but we're gonna try it on anyway so one of you will benefit from this shirt so it's gonna close here and this is gonna end up if I close it here right this is gonna end up like this on me I'm not going to be able to close it well let's see if I go like this, right, and I close the shirt here, right, granted I'm wearing a t-shirt underneath it, can I close it here? Wait. Oh, this makes no sense. It looks like I can, I can actually close it. Look at that. I don't know. <laughs> I may fit in this. I guess we won't know until I'm done with it. Now, the dots have right there, which is good. You, we won't know until I actually uh, try it on. For some reason, it felt like it wasn't gonna fit, but look, if I close it here in the front, right, where the buttons are going to be, and I close it here, at about 5 eight of an inch, and I close it here, at about five eighths of an inch, it's still together. It's a mystery. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, I'm done with this. Um, hey guys, I think I did a pretty good job on this. This is my first time. First time doing this kind of work. Um, and I like the idea, again, that the yoke here covers the seams so you don't feel the seams so let me put this back on we, we shall find out okay we'll find out if it fits or not anyway um i'm done this is video number three i think on this series hey we're almost done look we just gotta do the color oh i think the color is next never made one before should i make a dummy before i do the one i don't know um I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, this is going to look really nice if I fit in it. So the next time we're doing the color and then after that we're going to do the sleeves with the hem and then um, and then it be done and then we'll find out if I have to make it over and do a giveaway. So this is what I'm going to do, right? If the shirt fits me, obviously I'm going to wear it but at which point what I'll do is that I'll do a giveaway on the pattern because you remember I bought two and that's the reason why I bought two to do a giveaway on the pattern if the shirt doesn't fit me then I'll do a giveaway on the shirt and then I'll keep the second pattern to redo the shirt <laughs> in a larger size uh, so cross your fingers either way here's the front of the shirt I did pretty darn good there's not one pucker and um, I had fun you see this is my happy place I'm very relaxed I'm very happy I spend my me time I did a little bit of sewing I spent some time with you guys I'm happy with the result again if it fits we don't know we shall find out at the end um, if it doesn't not upset at all I've learned something do your measurements from the flap <laughs> yeah that would be my little tidbit for today um, I love making mistakes like that because let me tell you I'll say it again. I'll never make that mistake again. <laughs> so anyway, this was Sophia for my great challenge. I hope you enjoyed the series. Comment down below. Give me thumbs up if you like this video. 
Don't forget to subscribe to my channel right here in the corner. Thank you for spending the time with me doing this. And I really appreciate your encouragements on this journey um, as I am learning to sew by myself. Um, it's quite a challenge and I welcome it. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching, you guys. Bye. Hey, it's me. And guess what? Click that thumbs up if you really like this video. Thumbs down twice if you didn't. You can also share my video if you really, really liked it or save it to watch later. Also, you can subscribe to my channel, but don't forget to click that bell button so you are always notified when I post a new video. Thank you for watching.